When a storm hits your life, who do you cry to? Interestingly enough, as we go into this next verse, we find that these sailors do something really radical. The storm has come and they start crying, but who do they cry to? Welcome back, my friends. We're at Jonah chapter one, verse five. We have been taking our time, one episode, one verse, giving you information, hopefully a little bit of inspiration, and maybe some of you even gotten to the place where you get a revelation. I'm gonna be looking at the JPS this time. I'm alternating between the NIV, which was last week, the JPS this week, or this episode, last episode. We're at the JPS. In their fright, the sailors cried out each to his own God and they flung the ship's cargo overboard to make it lighter for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the vessel where he lay down and fell asleep. And that certainly is a good translation. But let's do what we've been doing in this deep dive Bible study. Let's slow down and go a little deeper. The first phrase, and the sailors feared or they were afraid and they cried out. Now, I've got a really simple question. These are professional sailors. These, you know, these are, these are sailors who are on the, sh I'm sure they've been in many, many storms. What kind of a storm causes professional sailors to cry out? And not only did they cry out, here's the interesting part. They cried out in a certain and specific way. By his word, he raised a storm wind that made the waves surge, mounting up to heaven, plunging down to the depths, Discouraging in their misery, they reeled and staggered like a drunken man, all their skill to no avail. This is Psalms for a picture of sailors in distress. I mean, in other words, if, if, like I said, if these are professional sailors and we believe that they were, for them to be crying out must mean it was a real storm. Here's what happens. Each of them, and this is where it's interesting, in, in the translation what it says is, each one cried out to his own God. That is certainly one possible translation. The other translation could be, and I wanna thank Dr. David Moster, PhD from bar University, as we went through these uh, verses together, he said, Keith, you know, the other possibility is, this can be, and they cried out to their gods, or to his gods, plural. So in other words, it, 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 certainly these, these were not, you know, <laughs> Israelites. Uh, these were probably pagan sailors who came from any number of different places who maybe even had their favorite gods. Some of them had the God of the wind and God of the water and God. And, I, and when I say God, it's, it need to be really clear, little God, not the one true God. Uh, but they basically cried out. So they may have had their own or their favorite deities depending on where they're from. Ezekiel chapter 27, verse eight, gives us a glimpse at the possibility that this was the case. The inhabitants of Sidon and Arvad were your roars. These are sailors. Your skilled men, O Tyre, were with you. They were your pilots, or the ones who were leading, or, 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 or guiding the ship. Geval's elders and craftsmen were within you, making your repairs. All the ships of the sea with their crews were in your harbor to traffic in your wares. In other words, these sailors, these, these rowers, these people that are on the ship could be from any number of the nations around there. And maybe it's an understanding that if you're from a certain country, you have a God, little g, that's the God that you worship or the one that you cry out to. Well, certainly that's what they had here is they were crying out to their gods. Isaiah 45, 20, <laughs> and this is the key. Come gather together. Draw nigh, you remnants of the nations. No foreknowledge had they who carry their wooden images and who pray to a God who cannot give success. The bottom line is this. They're afraid. 
rightly so. They're in the middle of a tempest, as the KJV says. They're in the middle of a storm that was pitched, that was sent from the creator of the universe. They're feeling like their life is at risk. And what do they do? They turn to their G-O-D, to their God, hoping that there would be some ability to help them. After they realized there's no response, they did the second thing. It says, and they flung the ship's cargo overboard to make it lighter for them. In other words, they're praying, they're crying out. There ain't nothing happening. Okay, I better lighten the load. <laughs> so, so now they start showing, throwing things. But here's what's interesting. The word that they flung is the same word that is used for Yehovah pitching, throwing. In other words, this is a, they're, they're taking this thinking this is gonna make a difference. They're, 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 uh, they're, they're pitching, they're throwing uh, their things overboard, hoping that there would be an action that would take, or a reaction that would take place. We're gonna to go to the next part of the section. It says here, Jonah meanwhile, now I love this because the image is you've got these sailors. Now these are sailors that are, maybe they don't know anything about the one true God. Maybe, maybe, say maybe. At least the ones that are crying out to these false gods, yelling to these false gods, pitching their things. These guys are doing everything in their power to try to help battle through this storm. But then it says, Jonah, meanwhile. Now, when I see Jonah, meanwhile, I, I, I actually see that little vav again. And the little vav makes me know that I can translate this a number of different ways. So, Jonah, but Jonah, then Jonah. Maybe Jonah did it at the same time. In other words, as Jonah is watching these guys, maybe he comes up from the, the first place that he's at and he's, he sees the storm and he's like, uh-oh, this, the, oh boy, oh, mm, uh-uh, mm-mm. And he sees them starting to throw things and, 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 and cry out to their God. And Jonah says, okay, listen, I've, I've, got, to, uh, <laughs> I've got to do something. Now, this next phrase, you all, is, is, is revelatory to me. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the vessel. Now, what is the hold of the vessel? It's literally as if Jonah is at, when he first comes on the boat, it says he went down, so now he's down in this level, but then it says he went down further. And what is this further? The idea is like he's in literally the hull of the ship, covered by panel or wood that's over him. Jonah is deep down in the place where he has decided he wants no part of responding to what this God has done. <laughs> hey folks, I found this when I uh, actually taped the promo for this series. It's a shark tooth. We are taking territory and we're gonna do that with your help. We need you to like. We need you to comment. We need you to share. Embed it on an end, uh, your website if you'd like. Let's keep sending this message around the world about the deep dive Bible study into the book of Jonah. All right, my friends, I am expecting that you have taken advantage of some of this information, some of this inspiration, get a little revelation. But this next phrase is an example where I just, I, you know, I said to the folks I'm working with here, I mean, I, I, listen, you guys, this is like the, the best technical production company in not only Charlotte, probably in North Carolina and maybe even the East Coast, who knows, maybe the country. I'm telling you, they're good. But I told them, I said, listen, this next section, this next little phrase really caught my attention. Here's what it says in the JPS, the Jewish Publication Society. They're looking at the same thing I'm looking at. And they said he had gone down into the hold of the vessel. Okay, the vessel is actually using a different Hebrew word than the, the, the word ship earlier, but it could be used as vessel or ship but the idea is that it's deep down in the hole, where he lay down and fell asleep. Now, <laughs> Jonah laid down and fell asleep. Okay, I want you to go with me to Genesis 15, verse 12. Abraham fell into a bit of a sleep like this. As the sun was about to set, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and a great dark dread descended upon him. I love that, great dark dread descended. <laughs> Psalm 76, seven. At your blast, O God of Jacob, horse and chariot lay stunned. Same word that we're dealing with here. Deep sleep, stunned. Daniel 10, nine, I heard him speaking. And when I heard him speaking, overcome by a 
deep sleep, I lay prostrate on the ground. <laughs> I'm having this conversation, folks, and I'm, I'm going through this now. Let me tell you what my process has been, just so you know. About five or six years ago, I wrote an entire biblical Hebrew audio course based on all the access I had to biblical Hebrew. I got a chance to go over to Israel and, and take a, uh, an actual Hebrew course, which had to do with modern Hebrew at Hebrew University. I had gotten a chance to spend time with my friend Nehemia Gordon, uh, where we went through an entire curriculum on uh, the consonants, the vowels, the accents, the Masoretic notes. I had done all of these different things, but then I decided because we wanted to do this, I wanted to go a step deeper. So I heard about uh, Rabbi Dr. David Moster, the PhD from Bar Alon. He was willing to meet with me individually. And I said to him when we were going through this, I said, you know, uh, Dr. Moster, I, I, I just feel like this isn't just a normal sleep. This, this is not Jonah just saying, hey, I'm tired. I've had a long journey. Uh, there's a storm going on. I think I'll take a nap. That's not what we're dealing with here. He says to me, Keith, you hit the nail on the head. He says, you know, when people have crises, there's potentially two things we think that happens. One, there's the, the, the fight, and two, there is the flight. In other words, sometimes they fight. It seems like the sailors are saying, hey, this is going on. We're going to fight. We're going to throw something. We're going to cry out. We're going to throw some stuff into the, into the water. Uh, um, Jonah, on the other hand, maybe you're thinking he's uh, into flight. Dr. Moster said, Keith, if you're right that this is a different word, maybe Jonah's in the freeze mode. <laughs> this is a deep, deep sleep. Now, I'll tell you what I see. It's the tale of two responses, the pagan sailors and the prophet Jonah. Here's what the pagan sailors experienced. First, they were afraid. That's fear. I mean, come on, this is a... This is a storm, this is a tempest. These are waves that are high and the ship is thinking about leaving the game. I mean, this is, this is, this is major, so there's fear. The second thing is faith. It might be in false gods, but they were crying out to their false god in faith and believing that somehow, some way, that God is gonna respond. The third thing they said was we're gonna fight. What was the fight? Hey, we'll cast things over. We'll do whatever we have to do. We're gonna lighten the load. Why did they wanna lighten the load? Hopefully then the ship would do better with the ups and the downs. They're doing fear, faith, and fight. The prophet Jonah, he does something a little different. Here's his response. Depart, <laughs> I'm out of here. To descend. Now those that are in the biblical Hebrew audio course are gonna see this word, yud resh dalit, which means he goes down. He goes down, he goes down, he goes down to Joppa, he goes down to the ship, he goes down to the inner part of the ship. And if we keep reading, we're gonna find out he goes even a little bit deeper. So depart, descend, and then deep sleep. Why is Jonah in a deep sleep? Is it possible that maybe Jonah had another plan? Maybe Jonah's thinking some other things and maybe it's possible, it's just possible. That this is almost like that deep sleep that, 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 that Adam had, you know, the deep sleep where he was put to sleep by the creator of the universe to take the rib out to build woman. Maybe he's been put into a deep sleep like Abram. Maybe he's in a deep sleep like Daniel. Maybe because of the intervention of the creator of the universe, he can't have flight, he can't have uh, a fear, but maybe he is frozen in place. Maybe that's what happens to people sometime. You know, I, I have to tell you all, we're in a, a time right now uh, in the United States and in the world where we've been dealing with this thing called a pandemic. And whatever you wanna think about it, the one thing that it did to a lot of people is it froze them. Some people tried to fight it. Some people tried to fear, to run, run, run from it. But there's some people that just literally couldn't move, and for, and for months they just couldn't, they couldn't take care of themselves. It's literally like they were put into a, a mode, a freezed mode, like, 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 like they're sleeping. And I've seen that happen, I've, I've, I know people uh, that have experienced that. But in all of this, there's something that the Father is doing it. Believe it when I tell you this, this is a great symphony on that boat 
God is putting together the great symphony. He's maestro. He's using the, he's going to use the sailors. He's going to use the ship. He's going to use the storm. He's going to use whatever he can use to get to his son, his prophet. And I want to tell you something. He will do the same for you. Believe it. I can't believe I've done this, folks. Not only like, subscribe, and comment, go to the more section. Below, we've got even more resources that are free for you as we continue in this amazing, exciting, deep dive Bible study into the book of Jonah. Welcome back, my friends. I am enjoying our study together, this deep dive Bible study into the book of Jonah. Hopefully you're taking advantage of everything that I'm providing for you, which includes the biblical Hebrew audio course, the PDF, the information we have here. I'm actually asking our friends that are working with us to graphically show you when we get to this section. I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's the lost in translation section. <laughs> what got lost in translation? We're going to take a look at the KJV. The Keith Johnson version. Here's how I see it based on the Hebrew Bible. Then the sailors feared and each cried out to his God slash gods. Could be either. Could be to his personal God that he is a favorite God or to the gods, many gods, little g, uh, that he particularly bows to. Then they threw their cargo, pitched it, just like throwing a dart into the water, hoping that there'd be an action. In the same way that our father pitched the storm for there to be an action, they pitched their cargo, which was on the ship, to the sea to lighten their load. But Jonah, <laughs> I love that. I love my translation, but Jonah. Same as the NIV here. But Jonah went deeper down, down to the lowest of the hull, and he laid down, and he slept deeply. How many of you right now are in that place? How many of you right now are saying, you know what? I, I, I've kind of had enough. This, this, this thing that's going on, whether it, hey, listen, we have people right now that are listening that are still living with the effects of something that's a first time in our generation event. Whatever you want to say about what happened or what is happening, it has affected every aspect of society. I'm speaking about this pandemic that we have been in or are in or by now out of, who knows, what, whatever it is, how did you respond? What was your response? Did you fight it? I know I'm listening. Hey, listen, I got some friends uh, that I know right now that fought this thing. I mean, they fought it at every level. Did you, did you, try, to, did you try to flee from it? I know some other people, some of the rich of the rich that said, hey, listen, I don't want to experience this with everybody else. I'm going to try to fly away and come to find out they couldn't even get on an airplane. <laughs> or did you freeze? And here's the question. Are you still frozen? In other words, have you gotten to the place where you realize our creator, the God of yesterday, of today, and tomorrow. Let me tell you something. I said this when this first happened. I happened to be in Israel at the time of this first announcement <laughs> that said that there was a what they called a worldwide pandemic. Now, be out of the country when a worldwide pandemic hits and try to get flights when it's been announced that the borders are closed. <laughs> Even though there was confusion, there was such confusion. I mean, when this happened, there was something in my spirit that said, the Father in heaven is not up in heaven saying, uh, you know, here comes the angel. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, how can I help you? Hey, listen, down on the, uh, the earth, there's this thing called a, and he says, well, what is it? Uh, tell me about it. How did it, it? No, our Father in heaven is aware of everything. And what I love about the story of Jonah is that because he's aware of everything, we as his people need to learn to trust him in the middle of it. We can be at a place where we can trust him even in the middle of it. And you would think that Jonah, the prophet, who heard from Yehovah, he had a word from Yehovah. In fact, I call Jonah a prosperity prophet because when he prophesied, back at the time that he did under Jeroboam II, he prophesied that the land would be brought back to the time where David had the, the, you know, the, the borders of Israel. And so he was a popular prosperity prophet. And yet this this, this prophet who had heard from God in the middle of this situation, the pagans 
are calling to their God and Jonah is in a deep sleep. And it gets worse, you all. I'm telling you, we're going to go to the next verse. It gets worse. But the revelation that comes out of this calls us as our father's people today to not be like Jonah. Don't be in a deep freeze. Learn to be a people who trust him completely, who call to him, who believe that he is a part of every aspect of our life. He is not up there busy saying, I don't know what's going on. Of course, he knows what's going on. He'll use it to his purpose. So what storm are you in? What is your situation right now? Where are you asking the question, what should be my response? Well, certainly, you can, you can fight, you can flee, you can be frozen, or you can be a person who's trusting him completely and saying, Father, you tell me, what am I to do? Your will, your way, your word. Let's learn to be like that, to be a people who look at his will, his way, and his word. Let's keep studying. Visit bfainternational.com today and join our online academy for free. You'll get immediate access to start watching all of Keith Johnson's latest programs, including the Time Will Tell series, Rediscovering God's Clock from Israel and Beyond, the Now is the Time miniseries, based in New York City and Washington, D.C., The Road to Reformation, a 10-step study for biblical reformation, the Open Door series, 18 hours of exciting teaching from a national speaking tour, His Hallowed Name, a series on God's name that was banned from TV. Also, hear directly from Keith Johnson through weekly personal blog updates. Why delay? Visit bfainternational.com right now. Then click the Enter the Academy button. Visit us today. Oh, you guys still with me? <laughs> can't get over this. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I mean, so, so literally we've got Jonah sleeping while the, 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 the sailors are having a holy moment, moment up on deck. They're, they're, they're having a revival almost <laughs> up on the deck and he's down in the, in the hull of the ship sleeping. Now, again, I ask the question, what would be your response? Certainly Jonah at this point knows in his heart of hearts what's going on. He knows why it's going on. In fact, if we keep reading, we're going to find out that Jonah out of his own mouth, well, and I guess I should, wait a minute, why am I going so far? I mean, I, I shouldn't go so far. Let's just stay right here. What does it say? They feared, they cried to their gods, but Jonah went down, laid down, and fell into a deep sleep. Well, my friends, where are you? Are you fighting? Are you fleeing? <laughs> Are you sleeping? Maybe, maybe you've given up completely. I want to give you some good news. The Father doesn't give up. It, this is just an amazing story because we're only in the fifth verse of this book. And I mean, this <laughs> we've had boom, boom, boom. It says in the beginning, what? It manifested. The second thing, rise up and go. He rose up and went the other way. And then as a result, the father pitched the storm. The, the sailors are afraid and Jonah is sleeping. Where are you, my friend? Are you awake? Are you still with us? Hopefully you're going to take advantage of everything we have right now because I'm telling you, we're just getting started. This is just the first few verses. We still got a couple more in this little seven episode series. So hang in there with us. Keep reading, keep studying, and we'll keep going. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.